Dr. Bayu, <clears throat> uh, now I turn to Indonesia, which is really in some ways the leader and representative of the ASEAN, uh, uh, which is very, very important and a sizable economic block. Uh, as we all know, the terrestrial belt and the sea road is quite different in the sense that the terrestrial belt go through very large countries such as Kazakhstan. Rather less developed, rule of law is not that strong, and hence a lot of infrastructure need, uh, projects are needed. For that, I don't think private sector will be that easy to do, and hence perhaps some of the state-owned enterprises from China may have to be involved. But as is always the case, civil, human civilization always develop around water, whether there's a sea or river or lake. And, and the sea road, all the way from China, which is an old sea, silk road yes. by sea, yeah. which is stronger actually in the old days than the terrestrial uh, silk road. And that's the area where a lot of people, highly populated, rather develop, more wealthy in general. So the belt and the road are really two very different concepts in my, on my mind. How does Indonesia, as a leader in your part of the world, how do you see uh, the Belt and Road Initiative? Are there opportunities? Are there dangers? What's your concern? Dr. Bayou. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, for inviting me here. And of course, uh, congratulate Terry and WPC with the excellence conference. Uh, I think we need to see this on the very core that the BRI or the uh, OB, OBOR, the OBOR initiative is basically an infrastructure development initiative. Whether or not we use land or sea, this is you know, the first initiative, I think, uh, in the coherent manners in this size on infrastructure development. So that's why we, um, you know, many countries, 60 countries already, and including Indonesia, welcome the initiative because we are trying to develop our own. And within the Indonesian uh, development plan, we, we already put out about 350 billion US dollars of plan of infrastructure developments uh, to, for, for, for the next uh, seven to eight years. And I think, I believe about 200 billion of it already been in, in discussion with, with, with the uh, BRI. And probably about 56 billion is, you know, try to materialize uh, on the investments. So uh, in Indonesia, they call it the maritime corridor developments, and that is part of developing uh, infrastructures uh, within Indonesia as an archipelagic countries. Uh, so again, we welcome the infrastructure developments. Uh, but I think the question is to whom it serves, to whom the infrastructure serves. And I do believe that uh, the BRI need to serve the achievement of sustainable development goals, right? Poverty reductions, uh, food securities, uh, energy securities, uh, employment creation, and so forth. And uh, I would like to, to underline that you already mentioned it, uh, food and energy and maybe water securities. Many of the countries who are involving in the BRI are in the big needs on, on to have that on their survival. We face climate change. We also, at least in Indonesian experience, the last uh, few months, if you, 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 you look at the media, we also need to have a disaster preparedness uh, put it out as a part of uh, infrastructure developments and post-disaster rehabilitations or earthquake, tsunami, and so forth. And uh, uh, I think this is make Indonesia uh, uh, approach the BRI initiative rather carefully because uh, many are asking China to open up their markets. But I think in our experience, please be careful because China is a such a big country. To put on context something like this, Indonesia is number four in terms of population in the world. We import about two to three million tons of soybean. China import 60 million tons of soybean. So you can imagine if China use, you know, the infrastructures to fulfill their needs, maybe there will no other soybean left for countries like Indonesia, for example, you know. 
So we I mean, we'll this happy. is something that you know we put this in in a very because we, we do un totally understand about the reason of of the, the the Chinese government and Chinese people. Of course, we're not blaming them about that, but that is the situation. So that I think that one one point that we need to to understand of this initiative. Second is the process of development. You mentioned about the investment investment related to loan, loan related to debt. That is one aspect. But within the, uh, much of the project, I think that is the case of Ma Malaysia, you mentioned about Malaysia, Sif, that uh, concern uh, uh, Prime Minister Mahathir is not only about the investment, but also the labor market as well as the product markets. Because the investment come also with a package. And that package is, is, is a product that they've been used in the project as well as, as the, 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 the worker who are also being used there. Uh, uh, the other point I think is very important that uh, BRI, and I'm not against it, you know, just to put this on the context, that we need to have a short-term and long-term result on that BRI. Why? Because political decision in our democratic country is short-term. It's a five years. A process, you know, one year is uh, honeymoon after that work, and the next two years is campaign already. So it's very short, actually. <clears throat> so we need to have a result so the government, the current government, and the next government, wh whoever, will support the, la the uh, sustainability of the project because infrastructure is a long term uh, project. That's Last point that I would like to share on this uh, very uh, distinguished conference is that if the BRI can be, you know, uh, put on the land as it been dreams by China and also other countries, I think from the last uh, two days we talk about multilater multilateralism. I think this will create new setup of multilateralism. Now, not only deal with agreement or you know diplomacy or uh, negotiation bound by infrastructure physical infrastructures and that will create a different uh, ball game in terms of modularism thank you Rick. thank you very good point uh, i wonder take for example uh, dr bayou uh, the rail link that uh, Mr. Leung mentioned between Kazakhstan, well, all the way, I suppose, Kaliningrad, all the way to uh, southern port of China, yes. uh, passing through Kazakhstan. Uh, obviously, it benefits China. Whenever you pass through goods and capital and people, it benefits China. But it also benefits Kazakhstan as well because it links it, give it a seaport, uh, and then also the high-speed rail that goes both east and west, or south and west. Yep. So would you consider that as mutually beneficial? Yes, I think that is something that we can see as a mutual, but we, again, size does matter. And, size uh, matter, right. Yes, China is big. And, right. and you know, compared, like, let me put it this way, China compared to Malaysia, I think certainly both will be, take the benefit, you know, but the size that they will take by China and uh, Malaysia will be different. So that is something not easy to understand, not easy to comprehend, especially in the political decision making. I think the, uh, the, in Malaysia is an interesting case. Yes. Uh, I just held a, a, uh, a seminar in Hong Kong on the IMBD. Uh, I am, M M B D yeah. uh, I, uh, MDB, sorry. MDB. I just have a, a seminar on that, and the, the, the two Wall Street Journal journalists <coughs> who discovered that were the two speakers, the only mm -hmm. two speakers. And I suppose there's a lot of things behind the scene there that a lot of people don't want to touch, uh, and hence that f perhaps might have forced the hand of Dr. Mahathir to back off <coughs> from that. So it is really domestic corruption related rather than necessarily geopolitical or economically related. On this matter of size, I think you brought up a very good point, Dr. Bayou. Uh, you know, Ten years ago, the government of Israel asked me to help them develop economic relationship with China. So I brought a lot of Chinese business leaders to Israel. But in the last one year, I began to tell my Israeli friends, don't be very careful, because China is so crazily big, and Israel uh, is rather small, that it can overwhelm <laughs> and then have a backlash. Yeah. That is something that I tell my Chinese friends as well, 
that you should be careful not to, uh, not to do that. Yeah. Uh, moreover, I think uh, from Israel or any other country's perspective, which is part of the BRI, uh, it is important to pick on quality rather than quantity in order not to have a backlash.